Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day as always. Leaving a like, leaving a comment or subscribing. All of these things help out the channel immensely. If you can, leave a comment with the numbers 256. If you know, you know. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over. News I missed, I'm still away, and therefore, here we are. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Earlier on Friday, the world's largest crypto exchange in the universe, known as Binance, came up with an exciting announcement to support the cryptocurrency mining industry. Binance Pool announced, announced, announced the launch of a half a billion dollar miner lending project to support BTC mining and other mining infrastructure providers. The official announcement from Binance says as the world's one of the world's leading crypto mining pools, Binance Pool has a responsibility to help maintain a healthy digital asset ecosystem in light of current market conditions, which have been absolutely Spectacular. Binance Pool is launching a $500 million lending project to support crypto miners and digital infrastructure providers. These people are quite fascinating. Uh, for those of you who missed the news a couple of months ago, Binance and like two, the number two other companies were the only people who were still hiring. Everyone else was firing 15, 20, 30% of their staff, were letting go of 100 people. And at the same exact time, Binance was like, oh, that's great. So we just bought 14 other new companies. And now in light of the uh, current situation where um, prices are not doing too hot, uh, they're now announcing like a new initiative to help people, uh, air quotes, help people who are uh, in the cryptocurrency mining industry. Of course, there are some caveats, but that just goes without saying. Binance said that this is the first of its kind project for Binance Pool. With this project, Binance said it will focus on providing debt financing to both public and private Bitcoin mining companies. Besides, Binance also plans to support different crypto asset infrastructure companies globally. It's very intelligent. If everyone else is struggling and you are not struggling and you can lend them a hand and also they are indebted to you in a certain way, well... That's just how banks work. As part of the project, Binance Pool will be offering $500 million worth of loans for a 12 to 18 to 24 month term. The interest rates for the loan will range between 5 to 10%. And that's the caveat. That's how they get you. You need help? We can definitely help you. We've been, we have tons and tons of money. But just give us a little 5 to 10% off the top. Nothing more. Furthermore, the Binance Miner Lending Project will also offer security to either physical or to digital assets. This was quite popular news. Normally, when Binance is in the news in general, it ends up making the news. Uh, but I'm not sure if everyone else realizes just how large they have become. When you are able to uh, essentially lend services that people could have normally done themselves but can no longer do and you have the money to be able to back up their projects, you make a gigantic name for yourself. Binance has already been around for a very long time. I think that this is going to be one of the most pivotal uh, crypto winters, as the kids are calling it, that we've had in a very, very long time. Because there are certain players in the game right now who are no longer playing and making sure that they, like, Binance has basically solidified themselves uh, forever. There's also news. I didn't see that much about this, but a lot of people are talking about it as well. That they may be launching their own, like, cloud mining service on their website sometime in November. So that normal people who are looking to mine cryptocurrencies may also be able to do that through Binance themselves. Very, very intelligent. Um, that's the Binance Cloud Mining launching a Binance Pool service with half a billion dollars news news. It's really fascinating. But I don't assume... How do I say this? Hmm. 
I don't think I can even put it into words. It was it was evident from the beginning that they were going to do very well. I think a lot of people were spending so much money, hundreds of millions of dollars on websites, uh, and one company kept their head down and were like, we're just going to keep building. And without further ado, let's move on. Also in the news, Dogecoin, XRP, and other cryptocurrencies supported by, you guessed it, Binance Pay, can now be spent on the ticketing platform in Romania known as Intertix. That is E-N-T-E-R-T-I-X. There's the tweet for it right there. It shows some fingers touching onto a screen, and I'd assume that's with cryptocurrencies. Binance founder Changpeng Cao took to Twitter to share the great news of Binance Pay now being available on Intertix, Romania's largest ticketing platform. Users can now use supported cryptocurrencies to buy tickets for teams. For teams? What? Oh, for like a, a game. I was like, you can, you can buy a team? And many other events. The CEO noted that this was another crucial step in pushing adoption because they're basically owning and or partnering with everyone else on the planet. Not sure if you got that. Binance Pay... Binance's cryptocurrency payment technology allows users to shop with crypto or send crypto worldwide and is currently being utilized by companies such as Travala and L'Excepcion. There's a website called L'Excepcion? Like with the apostrophe and everything? Okay. It currently supports over 40 cryptos, including Cardano, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, XRP, Dogecoin, and several others. I assume the other is Shiba Inu, Litecoin. I'm just, you know, throwing question marks out there. So, uh, on a weekly basis, twice, we always get news that Binance is either BitPay or Binance Pay. That they've been integrated into some other new system company is using them and they can now use this around the world to be able to do so. And so, this is what, I mean, it's... Not the most exciting news that we've ever gotten, but it increases adoption like 30-fold. Because once again, what if in 5 to 10 to 15 years, you, you know, crypto's everywhere and the prices have gone sky high and we're like, yeah, we held longer than anyone else and we can then pay for every single thing in crypto. Like you, 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 you get the news incrementally that you can pay for things with crypto. It's one website here, one website there, and then eventually you're like, oh, wait, actually, I can pay for every single thing, and I no longer have to cash out a crypto at all, because it's already there. Same exact thing like with those cryptocurrency, like Visa cards. Like, you're not cashing out a crypto. You're using the crypto that's attached to your Coinbase or whatever other account. How, do, how does that work, like, tax-wise? That's quite interesting. I never thought about that. If you're not cashing out of your crypto, because a lot of countries do allow you to pay for things in crypto. And there's no taxation that takes place. The taxation that well, English, the taxation normally takes place when you transfer out of crypto into fiat. What if there never is a transfer into fiat, and something is simply purchased with that crypto? Hmm. Fascinating. All right. That's the Binance Pay is now available on the largest ticketing platform in Romania, known as Intertix News. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, XRPL or XRP Ledger on-chain bridges now include cross-chain transfers for other XRP Ledger assets in a recent upgrade. OneChain, that is W-A-N, chain, has introduced a bridge upgrade that will allow the transfer of other XRP Ledger assets across multiple chains. Blockchain bridges have become a crucial aspect of cryptocurrencies as they provide a sort of universi universality? Universi uni English. Universal Univ that benefits holders. Why can't I say that word? Is that even a word? Universality. Univ that benefits holders of assets native to certain chains. One chain, one of the most, and I know three people are laughing right now. One of the most robust uh, blockchain bridge solutions remains a top dog within the scene. So we had news a couple of days ago. I can't even give you the time frame anymore. Uh, that there's another upgrade or integration that's happening. We had news that allegedly, 
Uh, you can now use or get XRP or use XRP on MetaMask through another cross-chain bridge kind of thing. And then we also, what was the other one? Ah, there was something else. Ah, there we go. The XRP uh, developers, I think they're called Ripple X, made it another cross-chain bridge thing so that you can interact with Ethereum assets on the XRP ledger. I believe that's what it was. That one sounds the most familiar. 18 months after its decentralized XRP bridge launched in April of 2021, one chain is introducing an upgrade that will allow the bridging of other assets native to the XRP ledger across chains. The initial stage of the upgrade will provide support for four XRP ledger assets. They include Bibblambalamb to token. That is B I B L E O M P. Bibliomp. Bibliomp ledger token. NVL token. X list coin and Green Zone X. What do all those things do? Wan Chain announced via Twitter handle and official blog post all four tokens are built on the XRP ledger. I haven't. What do those coins do? What does what does Bibliop do? What does Bim Bam Bam Blah Blah Bim Bam Blah Blah Blah? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, a lot of the news that we've been getting as of late uh, from the the XRP ledger specifically has been a lot of like extra integration. I wonder if this is a response to uh, the SEC and what's happening. I wonder if this was already all planned, i.e. were these things in the pipeline three, four years ago? Is this simply now a reaction to make sure that XRP's ledger is far more decentralized than it ever was by you know the cross-chain integration and wrapping other coins inside of it and is there, is there another chain that wraps XRP? I don't know. I, I, I remember hearing years ago that the XRP ledger is capable of, I think, two or 3,000 transactions per second. So I don't assume that many people would be trying to wrap up XRP to put it onto another quicker blockchain. But yeah, it's nice. I'm not joking. It's nice to hear that they're still doing stuff, that there's still interactions, that there's still, not that the Ripple team, but that there's things still being built on top of the XRP ledger. Uh, and people kind of haven't lost faith because for a lot of other projects, people most certainly did. That's the XRP Ledger one chain bridge uh, cross transfers news. Yeah, fascinating. Let's move on. Also in the news, Japanese video game giant Konami has announced plans to wait for it to launch a marketplace for trading in-game NFTs, as well as a wide range of other Web3-related product services and products. Yeah, products and services. There we go. It's only one word. The entertainment conglomerate also unveiled that it is looking to add new talent and will recruit a wide range of talent for system construction and service development to provide new experiences such as Web3 and Metaverse, Konami said in a Thursday blog post. So, every day, not every other day, every day there's another company announcing that they're going to be getting into the NFT Web3 Metaverse space. A lot of them did this as well around 2020. Part of the issue was that a lot of people who no longer pay attention to the space were very upset, very annoyed about the idea of everything being NFTified, you might remember this was towards the end of 2020. People were talking about how much electricity they used, how much energy they so and so. This was terrible for this, and it was really bad for that. And there were tons of video game platforms and companies, and nearly everyone came out in support of NFTs, talking about that they would be using them, integrating them into games in some sort of way. Uh, Twitter completely collapsed into itself, and everyone was really angry at these companies. All the countries, companies backtracked. I, I think it was also. Wasn't it Reddit as well? Reddit also was thinking about doing something and then they backtracked and then the, then the, the angry people got silent and then they relaunched the, the, the thing again. So this is what we're currently seeing happening. I think as the cryptocurrency, this is my view, as the cryptocurrency market is down, it appears that a lot of these companies are now like coming out of the woods and being like, it's silent. So now they're launching all of these programs or announcing that they're going to be doing them. Should a lot of them be doing them? 
I'm not really sure. There was another company who's launching like a hot dog metaverse or something like that. And it just seems completely unnecessary. Uh, Konami, I get. I do not personally play any Konami video games. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! years ago. But they ran that game right into the ground. They have no... It just, it just completely, absolutely... There's way too much happening now. Um, so this does make sense that they are a video game platform. I hope that they make a pretty or at least like Konami style uh, metaverse. I won't lie. If there's if there's a point where I can have a blue eyes white dragon in the Konami verse, I'm probably going to go there. But we'll see. I haven't... I think a lot of these things will take years, 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 years to build. I've I've seen what a lot of the other projects look like. Some of them are okay. Some of them I've 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 been scouring YouTube. You can like type in like different metaverse names and kind of see what they look like. Some of them look like PlayStation 1. Some of them look like PlayStation 3 and a half. Others have their own unique style and it's not bad. I can see it totally taking off because they didn't make sure to make everything hyper-realistic. It's more cartoony, but it kind of fits into what it should be. So the news is, uh, yet another company. Remember I told you all a year ago, I said, I'm not sure if you realize this, but I'm pretty sure NFTs in the metaverse are here to stay. And a lot of people kept on making fun of them and all this other stuff. And I'm like, you really don't get it. Like companies are looking for like a new edge. The entire idea is that the major players... Uh, that is to say, the Apples, the Amazons, the blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, and also, I guess, the 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 Facebooks. They're all making their own metaverses. It's, it's projected, you can find news on this as well, that sometime next year in quarter one, uh, it's expected that Apple is going to release their uh, headset or their glasses. No one knows exactly what it's going to be. But the rumors have been for a year that it's going to be something with augmented reality, that you are going to be able to wear this thing outside... And you will see digital things laid on top of the actual physical thing. So when the biggest names are doing it, and not that Konami is a small company, but it's definitely smaller than Apple, they have to rush to do it before everyone else can actually get into it at the same exact time. I would love if all these things were interoperable. Like that would be kind of the best thing for me. I, I would hate the idea of having to have like 15 different headsets to be able to go into different places. But I don't think that the companies will be uh, playing fair. Everyone will want you to simply spend time in their metaverse as opposed to anything else. But as long as they, I'm telling you, as long as the user experience looks nice and things are fine and people can have a fun time there. But a lot of these things I think won't make it, my opinion, because they're going to be just digital representations of what we have in the real world. You won't be able to say what you want. You won't be able to see what you want. You won't be able to hang out with your friends. Everything is going to be tracked. You can't really, like, there'll be no real level of privacy. You won't have any actual time to be free in these metaverses, which was the original idea of the metaverse. But also, let's be honest here, the original idea of the internet was also the exact same. The original idea of the internet was a place where we could all connect and be ourselves online. But then regulators came in and they were like, nope, you can't do that. It has to be... Spick and span, super clean, and that's not how people are. People are not perfect, and people don't want perfection, especially when it comes to things like this. So that's the Konami news. I wish them uh, well. I hope it works out for them. I assume by 2025, we will see this launching. So we'll come back to it then. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. Also in, this is happening every single day news DeFi lending platform Moolah, that is M-O-O-L-A, Moolah Market, has been exploited for $8.4 million, according to various sources. Yet another DeFi protocol has been exploited. This time, the victim protocol is Moolah Market, a non-custodial liquidity protocol on Celo. I don't think it's Cello, and I don't think it's Celo, so I'm going to say Celo. Like other DeFi protocols, Moolah allows users to earn compound interest on deposits or to take out over collateralized loans, delegated loans, and flash loans. Igor, long last name, a researcher for The Block, broke the news of Moolah's exploit this afternoon by briefly unpacking the $8.4 million attack on the platform in a Twitter thread. To attack Moolah Market... 
The exploiter obtained 243,000 Cello tokens from Binance. Next, they lent 60... This is crazy. Next, they lent 60,000 Cello to Moolah and borrowed 1.8 million of Moolah's native Moo, that is M-O-O -O tokens. Finally, the attacker began to pump the price of Moo using the remaining Cello as collateral to borrow other tokens. The hacker gained 1.8 million Moo tokens, around $655,000. He also gained various... Wait, how is that hacking? It sounds like they just used the protocol for themselves and were able to pump money out of it. Am I the only one who's missing that? The attacker obtained money from Binance... Next, they lent that money to the to the protocol. So, and then they, you know, took out a loan and borrowed 1.8 million Moo tokens. Finally, the attacker began to pump the price of Moo. However, they did that using the remaining Cello as collateral to borrow other tokens. It sounds like all they did was use the, the protocol. I don't know the ins and outs of this. Um... Moolah Market itself has commented on the attack in a Twitter statement. The project said it is actively investigating the incident and paused all activity on its platform. It also warned users not to trade M tokens, Moolah's interest-bearing tokens. Am I missing something? I, I feel like in, in many of these cases... Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this how it always happens with DeFi? So whenever we... So for those of you who missed it, like, and it wasn't a joke. Like This happens every single day. There's always an exploit or there's always a something on a decentralized platform where someone makes out like a bandit. Someone stole 1.2 million. Someone stole 18.794683 million dollars. It happens every single day and it's mainly on a number of DeFi platforms. The way that this one reads is that they simply used it to their advantage. And I mean that from, from the perspective of someone who doesn't use DeFi protocols. I assumed that the idea of the letters DeFi meant decentralized finance. There are tons of people who also like use the banking system for their own benefit. Like I have a friend who has a friend who apparently when the interest rates were like basically zero or 0.25%, she bought a bunch of property because she knew that her loan was basically 0%. So she's not really having to pay any... Like there are different ways to exploit the system in some sort of way as long as it works out in your favor... Did this person use code in some sort of way to... I'm, like, really just asking questions, like, because I, I didn't see the, the actual information on any other website. It simply kind of mimicked the exact same thing, basically saying that this person used the tokens and then borrowed and used more tokens. Was this not how the protocol was supposed to be used? I don't know. So anyway, the news basically is... Uh, I ask all of you once again to try to be as cautious as you can with your money. I know the allure of, of, of quick gains, very quick money, fast money is always present. Uh, but the DeFi space is very rickety. It is made of old wood traveling down an old, old dirt road with a donkey in front because this keeps happening all the time. I try to warn people just so you don't have your money in these platforms, but I know people can't always listen. People are going to want to uh, try their hand at making, I, I assume, 15, 20, 30% on their money, but it doesn't seem to be worth it at all. So if you can give me some information, I know I'm probably at the bare basics of how this protocol works. But from what I've been reading around, it just sounds like they just did what was able to be done to the platform and then got money from it so anyway that's the um moolah DeFi protocol uh was exploited news yeah moving along also in the news is david schwartz who was among the creators of the XRP Ledger and is now the chief technology officer of Ripple, took to Twitter to share with his subscribers that over the past few years, the blockchain behemoth has been following a new strategy compared to how it worked before that. 
Now, what Ripple is about has... I read that wrong. Is about has changed. That's also a weird sentence. Schwartz posted a thread on his Twitter account in which he shared a sort of joke of a story where he told 50 Ripple leaders in a room a few words about Ripple's last 10 years and next 10 years. The final two tweets in the thread do sound realistic. And in them, Schwartz exposed the big difference in approaching to business adopted by the Ripple... By the Ripple... Giant before 2008 and after it. Prior to 2018, he said, Ripple was all about ore. Making choices constantly. As he explained, here's a tweet right here. Uh, My passion is looking at technology that can enable us to do things we couldn't do before, build products we couldn't build before, and target customers we couldn't target before, or give our customers features they didn't know they wanted and couldn't imagine they could have. Okay, now he stated Ripple is about and they are not deciding whether to make this product or that, but they are trying to do both, not choosing whether to provide for this target group of clients or for another one. In the very beginning, the entire idea of the company Ripple and the XRP coin was to just work with banks. I told all of you years ago, I felt like that was going to uh, be a bit choppy simply because all these banks and institutions and other people realized how to make stable coins and transfer stable coins amongst themselves which is basically what central bank digital currencies are are going to be just government stable coins uh but the other issue is and i maybe i'm reading too far into this ripple years ago was like a yes company Ripple was the exact same thing as as the Winklevoss twins. Anytime a regulator said jump, they said, how high? From what floor? Where exactly should I be jumping to? I know it was all in the name of trying to like appease regulators and regulations that we all knew were going to come. But the entirety of like five years of them being in this space was just marred by them constantly being yes men, saying yes to everything. And then getting the back of someone's hand over and over. So I'm glad that they, not that they were watching my videos, but I'm glad they took my uh, my other options that I gave them, which was simply go somewhere else. Remember years ago, the I think this was 2019, but like before the like the lawsuit really hit them or even started, one of their main goals was like to be the leader of the U.S. markets, and I was like. There are other places on this planet. It doesn't make any sense. Like, go somewhere else. The U.S. simply does not like you. Every single regulator was totally against them, but now it also kind of makes sense. They have a product that was meant to overtake the banking system or, listen, to replace the U.S. dollar. People who like the U.S. dollar don't want that. So why would they want you in their territory? So now we have the idea. Keep in mind, they're working with tons of other countries now who are not within the U.S., who have for the last 60 years been trying to get away from the U.S. dollar. That's why the entirety of... (laughs) That's why the biggest banks in the UAE using XRP, like actually using the token XRP, was so significant. And I was trying to tell people that weeks ago, but I was like, I don't think anybody actually got it because of whatever is going on within the markets. But yeah, I think the main difference is that they were constantly trying to appease people who didn't like them. I'll tell you this right now. If you have friends in your life who you know don't like you or you don't like them, stop hanging out with them. I don't know who needs to hear that, but I'm sure there's one person out there. We all have all had experiences in our lives where we have hung out with people or hang out with people who we don't like because they're absolutely terrible. Stop hanging out with them. If they offer you absolutely nothing in the way of being a good friend, making you laugh, Saying, hey, let's come over. Let's watch a movie or something like that. Get rid of them. I'm telling you. I know there's somebody out there who needs to hear that. Same exact thing with Ripple. I don't know why they stuck for so long onto regulators. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Imagine for a second you own Ripple. And all you've done is try to do good by the SEC. And then they they take you to court. It's it's absolute it's incredible. Like I could not make this up if I tried. So, uh good to see that they're expanding, good to see that they're still uh doing great around other parts of the world that other companies and countries and banks are now using XRP. So, I think it just took a little uh, you know, 
the door hitting them in the face 14 times in a row for them to realize that the SEC is garbage. But I wish them the absolute best of luck in every other country because I still don't think that the U.S. is going to get proper crypto regulation until like the year like 2099. Can you imagine if it took that long? Can you... (laughs) Can you imagine we're all walking around like half cyborgs and we're like, guys... Today's the day they are going to have, I don't know why that was my robot voice. They are going to have crypto regulations and it's still, because it's kind of like, anyway, that's the Ripple CTO talking about where they were, where they are, and the next 10 years of the company news. Oh boy, life is ridiculous. And yeah, let's move on. Whoa, where's the graphics? Hold on. Where's the... Where were the graphics? Wait. There we go. What is that? Oh my gosh. What is that? Her head is huge. Now she turned away from us. Whoa. Gigantimus. I do hope that you... For those of you not looking at it or can't see it, there's like a gigantic South Park character and everyone's running away from her. I do hope... Oh, she turned away again. That you've all enjoyed... I do hope that you all have been having a fantastic day, fantastic morning, fantastic evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching. Oh, it's been replaced. Watching, watching, listening, (laughs) and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. Oh, she's back. See you.